Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to knit the herringbone stitch in two colors. This is one variation of the herringbone stitch and I posted a one color herringbone stitch video um, in a separate one and I've provided a link to that in the description field as well as at the end of this, this video. This one here, um, I've knit in two colors and it's really not that complicated. You're pretty much doing the same pattern. You're just, you know, alternating colors and I'll show you, I'll show you all that in just a moment. Now this project here, and I've provided the details of the pattern of the stitch itself and the project in the description field. Um, the, the, the pattern I've provided for the project is a little bit varied from this one, just because this was my attempt to just use up some leftover cotton yarn. Um, I was going through my stash and I thought, okay, I'm gonna, you know, make make a, try to make a dish towel with this or a kitchen towel with this. And so I ended up falling a little bit short. Um, so it's not quite rectangular. It's a little bit on the, the square side. Um, and I ended up putting these loops at the end and buttons so that I can have this as a hanging dish towel. So I can, I can hang it on a rack or um, on the, the handle of my, my uh, kitchen uh, cooking range. For this demonstration, I'm just using double pointed needles. You don't need double pointed needles for the, the stitch itself. And the pattern is knit, or the stitch is knit on a multiple of three stitches plus one. So I've cast on 16 stitches here. And for the pattern, I put in a couple or four rows of just plain knit stitch at the bottom, um, just to get just to get a nice little border at the end. And so I've already knit um, three stitches or three rows of the knit stitch here. I'm gonna go ahead and knit the fourth row. And this is completely optional. You don't need to do this. You don't, if you don't want to put a border, you can skip these first four rows of plain knit stitch and just start directly with the pattern from the cast on. Now I've cast on, um, you want to cast on, pick whichever color of the two colors um, you want to be. If you're going to do a border, then pick whichever color you want to be the the border color and then do the cast on and these first four rows in that color. Now starts the herringbone stitch pattern, which I'm going to start with color A. So we're gonna to switch to the next color, but remember throughout the pattern, we're actually not, we're gonna keep this, the previous color hanging on because we're just gonna keep carrying the color on the side. We're not gonna to have to snip and keep adding or attaching colors that way, all right? So we're just gonna leave this hanging. I'm gonna take this color A, leave about a four inch tail or so, just make a loop like that. I'm going to start knitting with it. Now the pattern goes, you're going to knit the first stitch. So I'm going to have this blue yarn hanging towards the back like that. Take this white yarn, my color A, insert the loop and knit. All right. So the first stitch is a knit. Then the pattern repeat is yarn over. So you're going to bring the yarn to the front, slip the next stitch purl wise. So insert as if to purl and just bring the yarn over. Then you're gonna knit the next two stitches. So your yarn is in the front, you want it to be there. You're gonna knit one stitch, knit the second stitch. And now we're gonna pass the slip stitch over. And in the two color pattern, um, especially on this first row, it's quite evident because you can clearly see it's this third stitch down from the top and it'll be in a different color on this row. So you're gonna take your left needle, insert it into the third stitch down like so and you're gonna pass it over these two stitches. So I'm gonna hold on to these two and I'm gonna pass it over. All right? Then you can see it creates this nice little, one part of the little herringbone stitch right there. And that's your pattern repeat all the way to the end. So here we go, we'll see that a few more times. Yarn over, slip one, knit one, knit two, pass the slip stitch over. Yarn over, slip one, Knit one, knit two, and pass the slip stitch over. So if you're someone who's done lace patterns and is familiar with this, this passing the slip stitch over, we typically tend to pass it over just one stitch, but with this herringbone pattern, we're passing it over two stitches. So that's what makes this just a little bit more challenging than your standard pass the slip stitch over. Using your index finger to hold down those two stitches can help to avoid them uh, or prevent them from slipping over. And you actually slip over the stitch that you intend to slip over, all right? So that's row one. You're gonna turn your work and do row two, continuing with that same co color, color A. So row two, it's identical to row one, except it's in pearl. 
So whenever you knit a stitch, you're purling a stitch. So here we go, purl one, and then yarn over. Except in this case, the yarn over, you're gonna bring it all the way around because your yarn is naturally in the front after that purl. So you're gonna bring it all the way around. Then you're gonna slip one, and then you're gonna purl one, purl two, and pass the slip stitch over. So in the second row, obviously now all of our stitches are in white, so you're gonna have to count. It's the third stitch down. That was the stitch that we slipped. And we're gonna pass it over these two stitches. And that's your pattern repeat. Yarn over, slip one, purl one, purl two. Pass the slip stitch over. And we'll do that a couple more times. And it helps to, to knit this a little bit on the looser side to help you do this, this passing the slip stitch over in here. I've split my yarn a little bit, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay, um, if you're someone who knits really tightly for this, for this pattern, you might wanna just knit a little bit on the looser side because otherwise you'll have a hard time doing the, the passing that slip stitch over. Now this last stitch, it's a little bit loose here because we've we just left this yarn like that. And I'll show you what to do to, with that in just, a, in just a second. But let me do this last little, pass the slip stitch over. Here we go. Now you can take this white yarn that we had and you can tie it, this little tail of the white yarn of the color A, and you can tie it to its original color right there just to keep it in place, all right? And now that we're done with this, we've done the two rows in this in this color A, we're gonna switch to color B. So you'll notice that naturally at the end of this row, my, my color A is towards the back and here's my color B sitting right here. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna start knitting with this color B. So here we go. You'll, do, you'll repeat rows one and two now with color B. So knit one, yarn over, slip, knit, knit and pass the slip stitch over and again it's really simple in this first row knowing which st stitch to pass over because it's it jumps out in that other color so we've completed row one in that stitch i'm going to turn it over and do row two so row two it's identical to row one except in purl so purl one yarn over Slip, purl, purl, and pass the slip stitch over. And your stitch count remains the same on both rows. Your stitch count doesn't change. So here we go. And that's it. Now you've completed rows one and two in color B. You'll notice again, the color naturally hangs towards the back. So you're just gonna leave that there. You're gonna pick up the color A and you're gonna do rows one and two again with color A. And that's it. Keep continuing that way. And if you do that, your work will start to look like this. So you'll notice here that this is the, the with this sample that I, or this project that I knit up, you'll notice that this is the edge, right? This is the edge where we were changing the colors and you can see that it gets up really nice and pretty. Um, as long as you, you keep doing that where the color hangs in the back and you bring the new color from the front, um, it's, it's gonna give you a very pretty edge. You're gonna keep doing this till you get to the other end. Now, in my case, I actually ran out of um, blue the blue color here, the light blue color here, which is why I ended up doing this um, edging in the, the pink color rather than the blue color. But ideally, you would want to do it in the same color. So in the pattern, in the description field, I've provided it with, um, I've, I've described it as to how this ideal one would have looked like. This is completely optional. I put in um, three little loops on, on either end here, I'm just using a crochet stitch, a crochet hook. Um, I hooked up, I, I crocheted up a chain and I connected it back here 
and just knit um, and just kind of, you know, tied a knot to it and just made a little loop right here. And I, I sewed on three little buttons right here. You can, you can even see that I had two of these pretty little uh, wooden buttons and I didn't have a third one of this size. So I ended up just using the, this little plastic button here, but it works just fine. Um, as you can see in the picture on the cover, um, on the cover page, how it hangs nicely on my, on my little cooking range. So I hope you give this two stitch um, herringbone pattern a try. You'll notice that the fabric is not quite as thick. It's, it has a little bit of a give. And that's because I knit this with a slightly larger needle than I would have for this regular, for this type of, of yarn. And so if you want a looser fabric like this, let's say you're using the stitch to, to knit up a blanket um, and you wanted it a little bit on the looser side, then I would suggest just knitting it with a, a, a needle size that's a little bit larger than, than what you would normally knit for that, use for that type of yarn. Thanks as always for watching and happy knitting.